Hi. Gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. Well, I'm on my way homeward bound now after my few days stay here in Las Vegas. Been good weather, good time, and lots of eating. But uh, now I'm heading home. going to walk halfway to the airport and then take a bus. And uh, just want to let you know, you know, uh, Jesus will be returning soon. And one way you can figure that out is by reading Hosea 6, 2, where it says that two days and then God will revive us. Then on the third day, he will rise us up to be with him. And the Bible explains that a day to God is a thousand years. So we just have to figure out when does those two days start. Well, if they started when Jesus was born, then uh, that would have happened 18 to 22 years ago. And so, obviously, there's been no reviving of the church since then. And certainly... We would be in the third day now, and there's no hint that uh, we're being raised to the Lord. However, uh, if we go by when Jesus rose from the dead and then ascended to heaven, we'd have to first figure out when he was born. And they're pretty positive that he was born either in 4 B.C., or 6 BC, and then he began his ministry and died at age 33. So if he started the uh, 2,000 years when he rose and ascended to heaven, that would make it 2027 or 2029, depending on that 4 BC or 6 BC birth date. And so it's a uh, meaning that 2027 is coming up pretty quick. Now also in that Hosea 6-2, it says reviving. It doesn't say revival like suddenly a lot of people are going to come to Christ. It's like already God's people are like practically dead and they need to be revived. You know, like a person that's not breathing, you have to give them CPR so they will revived and live so I believe this reviving is like CPR and why would the church need to be revived well since the beginning of the Bible we have all the kings of Israel and pretty much all throughout time that God's people disobeyed God. And uh, started with Adam and Eve. They ate the apple. And so their spirits basically died then. And so uh, uh, then we can read in the Old Testament the story all the way up to where they started having kings and we find out that every single king disobeyed God, didn't do what was right in the sight of God. Then Jesus came, died, and you think, wow, now we have him. It should be really easy to, to do what's right in the sight of the Lord since God wrote his laws on our heart. But we have absolute proof that Christians, even though they're born again and accepted Jesus, started right from the beginning of going after different people and different doctrines. And, and this group is with this guy and this other group is with this other guy. They're already having division. And then, of course, we have the Catholic Church where we could see all the popes were corrupt. 
you really couldn't find any corrupt. One of the best popes actually was in more recent times, John Paul II, which he did pretty good. <laughs> and uh, But then uh, he was by far from perfect. And uh, so um, that was called the high roller. On the other side of that is several cables, which uh, you can ride down the cable uh, from Las Vegas Boulevard all the way to this back site here, where I'm at. And we're, this is the high roller thing. Uh, <coughs> So even Pope John Paul II, uh, overall, had some particular problems. And uh, so we're continually seeing that God's people don't want to obey God. And we have so many scriptures that tells us that if my people don't obey me, uh, then he will uh, punish their nation, basically. And so we have uh, several scriptures in the Bible that talks about the disobedience of God's people. And one especially telling is Leviticus uh, chapter 26. And I would say we're at verse 28, which is the fourth level of disobedience, where God then explains exactly what he's going to do. And reading it, one would almost say, well, that sounds like the tribulation period. And so, uh, see, construction is everywhere in Las Vegas. The monorail is right behind me, and I took it and lots of places in, in, along the strip. I was surprised there's any space left, but there's lots of spaces. Lots more big, huge casinos are going up. So we have a, a history as Christians. We have a history as a people of God in the Old Testament of disobeying God. It seemed like humans are really bent on disobeying. God, and so God's going to set up a time, uh, and when that time comes, there's going to be a great falling away. That means God's people, Christians, maybe to the tune of two-thirds of them, will turn their back on Jesus, and maybe you can see hairs in the background, that's where I stayed. And so we're going to have to have uh, some sort of reviving because there's such a falling away and God doesn't want anybody to perish that he gave Jesus. So God's going to send his two messengers to kind of shake up the church so that they won't miss when Jesus returns and raises us in that third day, as Hosea 6 2 says. Uh, so, we're at the point where we're going to start seeing this reviving begin. And one of the things that the two witnesses are going to do is, is bring as many as plague as they want any time they want. And it's not just to wreak havoc on Antichrist's kingdom, but to shake the church so that they won't they might be reconciled to God and not perish. And I can't see what time it is. So we're uh, yeah, just having a hard time seeing the clock in there. So the exciting thing is 
we're at that time that we can begin to look around us in the nation, in the world, and see things that need to be done. And one prophecy says that the gospel will be preached in all the world, and there's so many people going around and says that's already been done. Well, just because the satellite can send down the gospel and touch every part of the earth doesn't mean that it's reaching the people. As of today, there's like 2.8 billion people that don't even, even hardly even know who Jesus is. And so we've got to understand that the gospel hasn't quite been preached in all the world. Fortunately, there are groups out there that is specifically going after these groups. Now, what's hard about it is, even though uh, the languages could be pr pr printed into the Bible, a lot of these languages, there's like 12,140 languages, or one, yeah, and 75% of them are illiterate, the people can't even read. And if they had a language that was written, they couldn't even read it. And uh, so, in fact, the group called Wycliffe that is about translating languages, Bibles into different languages, has huge barns full of Bibles that were returned because there's nobody that can read them. And like I was saying, that there are groups that are making audio Bibles in these languages. And they're, they're up to like 1,240 languages. Uh, and to get all of them, they're figuring it'll take to 2030. They are about... And they send these portable devices that can crowds can listen to. They go to village to village to play the Bible on these Bible players and uh, they had some amazing testimonies about uh, the deliverances and whole villages coming to Christ so it's exciting to hear this kind of work is being done in the world uh, in efforts to preach the gospel to all the world and so uh, but even so, that doesn't stop the need for a shaking to those that are believers because so many false doctrines and traditions of men and customs that are not right in the sight of God and loving your neighbor of yourself is something that's just not being done. The church often only loves the people that agree with them and if you don't agree with them, they hate you and they'll try to make laws against you. And so many pastors, uh, in the scriptures that say proph prophesy against the pastors because they are feeding themselves and not the flock. Uh, so many of them just believe because they went to Bible school and were taught what Bible scholars say that then they're right, absolutely. They say they completely see that their theory is right or their philosophy on the Bible is right. And so it's going to take quite a bit to shake them up. Uh, concerning the gay issue, uh, recently I talked to a pastor of the church nearby where I live at length, and he just absolutely positive, won't budge an inch, on that his scholars are absolutely proves that this word arson or codies mean homosexual, and just won't budge off of that no matter what else is there. And he's saying that, yeah, from almost the beginning, this is what was preached. But also, the fact of history is, yeah, from the beginning, there were some people that did preach against gays. 
but every time they did, it wasn't by far the majority by any means. But even when they did, they there was always others that rose up in rebuttal, showing that what they were teaching is not correct. And this word arts and codes, this codes thing, you can attach all kinds of things in front of it to cover a lot of different kinds of sexual sins, but. Uh, because the word arson can mean man, they somehow assume that it means homosexual. The problem is that it doesn't. It means a sodomite. And Philo, a first century uh, philosopher, that, that that word arsenicode didn't mean male temple prostitute. And so and he, he lived there when Jesus was here, when Paul was here. His lifespan covered that area. So We need to understand that just because your pastor thinks he knows the truth about certain Greek or Hebrew words doesn't mean that he's right because there's always two sides of the story from the beginning and glare on it, it's hard to see the time. So we need to keep in mind that just because a preacher or pastor says something, it doesn't mean that's how it is. And also, after all, there's been 2,000 years. If Christians knew that it's going to be 2,000 years before the first possibility that Jesus can return, Christianity would probably be considerably different. And so, It was good to have this a belief that Jesus can return at any day so people can be on their toes to uh, be ready and behave in themselves. So, uh, but then as we get closer to when knowledge increases, so we know a lot more and more science and more ability to go into the past and figure out what was said. We knew how people lived because you can't interpret the Bible according to today's customs. It was written in the first century and so we need to figure out what people thought of the words back then. Then we have some things. We had the Bible had been uh, revised using corrupt texts all the modern versions are using corrupt text. And so we have to be careful of that. Even the majority text, which is the correct text, uh, somehow in printing, somehow or another, I don't know if it was done on purpose or whatever, but some words have been just flat out changed. And it, so when we're reading the Bible, we have to understand Satan's been busy trying to manipulate it in any way he can. So we have to be thankful for God's grace uh, that uh, we still have uh, fairly good books out there, namely the King James Bible. Uh, then, then we have other problems that the books that are used to define Hebrew and Greek words, they've been also revised and generally to fit church doctrine so that when you look up a word it will uh, coincide with what's being preached. So it's a never-ending battle to 
walk with Jesus and to study to show yourself approved to God so we need to take time to uh, realize that the most important thing is like John 3.16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life God made it pretty simple. You just believe that he sent his son to pay the price for your sins because you can't pay the price for your sin. And so, see, I'm heading in this direction. Uh, so, uh, and then, he, to obey him, he made it easy. Just believe him. That means believe when he said that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. If you believe that, you're obeying God. And then the things that we do is to love your neighbor as yourself. So God made it pretty simple. But even though it's simple, we have all the forces that be because Satan doesn't like us because we're in the image of God. So he's going to attack you in every way he can. One of the ways is when you sin, he'll tell you you sinned and try to make guilt come on you. And so that you will uh, think God is forsaken you. Hi. And But God has promised he would never forsake you. And as I said earlier, that when Jesus died on the cross and you believed him, God imputed righteousness to you. So as far as God concerned, it's you're righteous. So whatever your sins commit, it's not going to uh, make you look like you're guilty. You're righteous to God. So and that's a power that we have when you're being attacked and you think that God, you're talking to a brick wall or something, and he doesn't hear you, you just start claiming that righteousness. Satan won't hang on to you very long and you begin to get back close to God. So, keep this in mind. So, and as I said earlier, time is getting short and at least half the world population will be killed before any chance of the rapture. The rapture just simply, the dead will rise first, but then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with the Lord in the air. But to get there you have to go through 1260 days where the two witnesses are reconciling you, reviving you, giving you CPR so you don't fall away. And those you hated will probably be there with open arms loving you back into the kingdom of God. So, first of all, keep your faith and then love your neighbor as yourself but to get started you should accept Jesus just keep in mind you cannot pay the price for your sins there's nothing you can do on earth uh, to earn your eternal life if you try to rely on yourself you're going to go to eternal damnation you'll be thrown in the lake of fire the books will be open and your sons will be judged. If you accept Jesus, you are washed and you're clean and you're already written in the Lamb's Book of Life to live forever. So, so turn to Jesus right now say Jesus I believe you're the son of God and that God rose you on the third day 
forgive me of my sins and come to my life. Thank you for paying the price for my sin, shedding your blood for my sin. If you prayed that prayer or one like it, just believing that he died to pay the price for your sin because you're a sinner, now you're saved by grace and righteousness is imputed into you. And your sins, past, present, and future, are taken care of. You won't stop sinning, but you will, you will have the desire to, to do what is right, because God writes his laws on your heart. Sometimes that's not easy, but just keep in mind, you are righteous in the sight of God. And now, after you're... have accepted Jesus, out, read the King James Version. Start with the book of John, then read the book of Acts. And Acts is important because it tells you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the days that are coming, we need that extra strength and power to get through the terrible days that are ahead. We ask you to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Initially, you have the evidence of speaking a language you haven't learned. This language will make intercessory prayer and you will be given gifts of the Spirit. These are operated by your will as the Spirit will work His gifts through you. And one of those gifts is healing. You got a place of pain right now? Put your play, hand right on that uh, place of pain. Jesus hasn't stopped healing. And once you're saved, you can lay hands on others and they could be healed. So got your hand there now? In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now, tune in every week at this same time because I come on a few times a week and I'll be on the same time you're watching now, next week. And go to my website. Press the GoFundMe button or the Donate button. Give a little, give a lot. A little bit helps. Really appreciate that. Now, God bless you. See you next week.